So for three months straight, we would get mortared on and off almost every single day, random times. And we didn't know where it was coming from. We couldn't pinpoint areas. We didn't know what the agenda was behind it. We were not exactly sure why our base was getting bombed. And lots of stuff was being destroyed in the process. Their aim was terrible. And they obviously were trying to pinpoint where they were going to be hitting because they kept walking the rounds closer and closer to where they were going. They eventually ended up hitting buildings. They hit our motor pool and damaged a bunch of vehicles. And it wasn't every day that we got mortared, but for three months straight, pretty much every other day, and sometimes multiple times a day, this happened. But one day, we had a UAV up in the air, an unmanned aerial vehicle. And it was pinging for cell phone signals. And right before we got mortared, that UAV actually pinged a cell phone signal right in the center of our base. That cell phone signal right in the center of our base was automatically uploaded to our Blue Force trackers. A Blue Force tracker is basically a computer system that's set up inside the vehicle so we can see exactly where different friendly people are, where they're patrolling, where their trucks and stuff are at. If we need help, we can try to get help. It was a computer that <clears throat> basically tracks everything that's going on it's hooked up to that network and, and has that style of system, that GPS style of system to it. So it pinged on the, the phone number, it uploaded into the Blue Force tracker, and we immediately knew where they were. And we had three different convoys set up on base at that time to respond. And when we responded, it was astonishing. It was two female interpreters, twin like 19 year old interpreters that were going out with us and basically transitioning or uh, language just converting the language you know the Iraqi language to English and then um, they were basically our patrol linguists they would translate everything and they were actually talking these guys on to the different targets and then when they were done doing it they would take the cell phones that they were using to contact these bad guys off the base and they would shove them inside their their wahoo. Yeah, down the female part. <laughs> and they would hide it until they could get somewhere where they could put it away and do the same thing the next day. And they would tell them, you know, adjust your, your rounds more to the north or to the south or the east or the west. And we took those female interpreters and we dropped them off outside of our base to the Iraqi National Guard. And we knew that something had to be done, and we couldn't do it because we can't we can't deal with the foreign people in any kind of punishing way or whatever. So we have to explain the situation to them and let them deal with it because that's their jurisdiction, not ours. And when we dropped those two females off with the Iraqi National Guard, they took them in the back of this compound, and all we heard was screaming and crying that was going on from back where they took them and we didn't actually get to see where they went but from that day on whenever we went on patrol we actually never physically seen those girls again I don't know exactly what happened I'm assuming they probably killed them for what they were doing I'm not exactly sure um, the Iraqi punishment system is much more brutal than what we would typically deal with here, especially in a situation like this where they were traitors to us. And our Iraqi National Guard leader was a pretty stand-up kind of guy. He wasn't, he wasn't really, really corrupt. I mean, he was somewhat, but not to the extent some of the other people we ran into did or were corrupt. But I think what ended up happening is they probably tortured those girls and then killed them or made them move somewhere hours and hours away after they beat and used raped or whatever they did i'm not sure what they did to those girls but we never seen them again and basically after that it was just a uh a block of peace we weren't getting mortared every day anymore we weren't um we weren't getting attacked every day and we actually found the guys that were doing it and i'll leave that for tomorrow's segment
So be blessed, guys.